welcome to 30 Minutes to Wealth. The show that teaches you how to build wealth through real estate. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to share some of our key strategies in real estate with you. Right here on 30 Minutes to Wealth. Hi, I'm Carmen. This is Jordan. Welcome to 30 Minutes to Wealth. The show that teaches you how to build wealth through real estate. Today we have a very fascinating episode that's talking about an entire family and their success in real estate. We're excited to have Jason Tom on the show today where his family owned a large portfolio and exited and retired early. The show is amazing. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jordan and this is Carmen. Welcome back to 30 Minutes to Wealth. Today we're here with our guest, Jason Tom. Jason, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. It was uh, a bit of a surprise to be invited onto the show, but I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, we're really excited to have you. And we're gonna be talking about a bunch of different things today. You know, your family business, um, you know, um, in construction and industrial space and then selling off and in passively investing. So there's lots that we're going to cover. But to start, tell us a little bit about yourself. A lot has happened in the past, you know, 25 years for me. And uh, I come from a construction background. I grew up uh, working on construction sites from the age of 10 on. So oh, wow. learned how to work wow. hard and, and I appreciate it. So that's kind of where it started for me and uh, my father, he had ran the construction business, worked for a lot of developers that were very successful. He saw that, wanted a piece of that and mm -hmm. built his own little empire um, yeah. in, our, in our local area. Yeah, it's incredible um, to see what you've accomplished or the family together yeah. um, and the hard work you've put forth in, in the whole thing. And now for your father, did he, was he always in construction? Did you, you, you obviously grew up in construction? I grew up in construction. Uh, my father did not. He was actually a drafts person for a steel company in okay. Toronto. Okay. Uh, got a job offer to do that job up in Owen Sound. The mm -hmm. plant he was drawing at shut down. And he wondered, what am I gonna do? Went to the library, got a book on how to build. Wow. And started building decks and garages in the 60s. And it just wow. evolved from there into, uh, into commercial construction is what we had been doing for the last 25 years. And uh, we were for a lot, worked for a lot of different developers all over Ontario. Mm -hmm. And um, so basically you're in the Owen Sound area. So that's where you grew that's up. That's our primary area, yeah. Right, okay. And then a lot, and your real estate was all in Owen Sound as well? Or did you venture out to any other areas? Not really. We did some uh, residential stuff in uh, the Northern Peninsula, which you're there you're familiar with. Yes. We did some uh, uh, development up in Gravenhurst area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the majority of the stuff we, we held on to uh, was in the Old Town area. Excellent. Well, there's a really neat story behind all of this and yes. why you're here. Yes, there is. So I can't wait to, to share with our viewers uh, the process yeah. and how it graduated to where you are today, which is in a very nice position. You're basically semi-retired, right? That's, that's what I call it. Yes. Uh, I still go to work Monday to Friday and I'm there all day every day and Saturday mornings, but that's just a habit. I don't need to be. Right. I, do you, do you want to be? No, I don't. But it, <laughs> it's just I've been doing it for so long, it's tough to break that routine. So I'm weaning myself off and, mm -hmm. and trying to get out earlier and finding more things to do um, yeah. out of the office and the shop. So yeah. it's, it, it's not an easy transition, but it's happening. So talk to us a little bit about yeah what that process looked like then, like you got started um in this business at a very young age and so what exactly were you doing and yeah how did you kind of how did your family scale this business so it was commercial industrial for us basically as long as i can remember it, we got out of the residential before i got actively involved um my brother and i started working summers in the construction business mm -hmm. you know at a really young age 10 for me so i was able to you know save a fair bit of money did you want to do this when you were 10? No, <laughs> okay. no. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> like what? young. No, yeah. it, no and, and I really, it was never my passion, but it was a means yes. to an end. Yeah. And, and I could see that because I was watching what my father was doing and he was um, becoming quite successful at, at building rental properties. So at a young age, I was able to purchase a house when I was 18 or 19. Um, and I was... Wow. I was actively in, in construction and able to do everything and young, so you can work you know, 80 hours a week and it doesn't bother you. So yes. after working on the commercial construction site, 
I'd go to the, the, the flip property and, and work on it all night and weekends wow. and then rent it out and then flip it eventually and, and repeat the process again. Uh, you can only do that so long yeah. as when you're not passionate about it. And I wasn't. Like I said before, it, it was a means to an end. What I wanted to do was, you know, I like work. I just, I love to work with my hands. Um, I love construction and love working on cars. And that's mm -hmm. really all I wanted to do. But this was how I could get there. Uh -huh. So after flipping, you know, a couple of houses, got more actively involved on the commercial property side of the family business. And we kind of, we had a, a, pl a 20 year plan laid out in front of us. Wow. And I helped my dad steer to get to get there. So who did the plan? Your dad? No, it was a collective. You, you, you can't do it by yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because if it was up to my dad, he would own everything until the day he died. And then that'd be it. Because he just wants he, he he wants to build as big an empire as he could. Wow, yeah. I I I'm with your father. I was that gonna one. say that yeah. sounds uh, a little like yeah. Someone. I've got a bit of a problem with buying real estate. Like I just lean <laughs> on it so much, and every time I see something, I can't I cannot. Was I can't say no. Yeah, and the passion you have for it is <laughs> yeah. exactly the same as my father. Um, but it was different for me because I don't I don't have any kids myself. My brother's two boys are not interested in getting involved in the family business. Right. So there was no no reason to to have it go on any further than we actually needed to. Mm -hmm. So once we had a, a, a point in time that we thought, okay, we can exit this and be able to retire at an age where we can appreciate it. And, yeah. and appreciate life and that appreciate working life. so much. Yeah, because, you know, the first 25 or 30 years was working pretty hard and missed out on a lot of life. Mm -hmm. But the next 25 or 30 years are going to make up for it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So now how did you guys, how did the family um, end up acquiring, there's a specific industrial. portfolio of industrial that you owned in Owen Sound area and you built each and every one of these buildings. Yes. Share that story because that's really fascinating. So that, it was, I forget exactly when that was, the economy was in turmoil. Um, it was farmland when, when dad bought it. Uh, it had a, a plan on it, just a sketch. He took it right to the end and when it was able to develop it when things were easier to do. Yes. Um, you know, you can, you can make things happen a lot faster. And, and by the time it was ready to go to market for the, for the lots, uh, it, the economy had come back around and it started to move pretty quickly because there, there was a need. He could see that there was a need in our local community for commercial industrial properties. Yes. Uh, because there was a lot of small businesses that they were working out of, you know, driving sheds in farmers' backyards or, mm -hmm. or across town in the commercial industrial park, which was a lot more expensive between, you know, the property values, the rentals, and taxes. Mm -hmm. So there was there was a need for what he was developing, and he could see that, and he made it happen. So what were the end product like? What was it being used for? So right now, it, it's it's very diverse commercial industrial, even some commercial retail. Okay. So uh, a lot of wholesale type businesses. Okay. Electricians. Uh, yeah. Sign companies. Mm -hmm. it, uh, yeah, it's really diverse. Mom yeah. and pops joints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. And and so when he when he started, so he bought a farm. The farmland. The farmland. How many yeah. acres was that? That was, I believe, it was a fifty acre parcel. Fifty acres, and then he bought that, and then developed it into. Developed into the into the commercial lots. Uh, we didn't build all the buildings in the park because. Well, it just wasn't sustainable with cash flow. Had to sell some lots off and, right. let, and let people build their own. But mm -hmm. we built most of the buildings in there and either sold them or leased them out, depending on on what what the individual client wanted or we could afford. So, how many buildings did the family keep? I think there was twelve or thirteen in, in wow. that park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It it, it was it, so you know basically your family decided that it was time to retire, move on, the pl this so the was your plan, phase, right? Yes, that, right? That was the, we had a plan laid out you know, 25 years ago, it started. Oh. Yeah. And and there was an exit plan. And, and I came along just in time for that 25 year perfect. plan. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and it was just it was just a cold call to So yeah, how, yeah, I was gonna say, so how did you guys meet? Well, I, you didn't have it listed officially, did we, you? We had it 
sort of listed officially to one broker who had some friends that were aggressive mm -hmm. and one of his contacts made a cold call to you guys mm -hmm. and showed you the portfolio. Just a cold call. That's all it was. Mm -hmm. Little awesome. did they know it, a year, like a year of negotiations. Cause yeah, it, it was a lot of work because we, yeah. we weren't educated on how to sell something. Right. So to put the, the package together to be able to communicate with, with you guys, the buyer, on on what we were offering and what the return on investment was going to be. It was a lot of work for it everybody. Was, yeah, so it was. explain explain what you guys did. Yeah, so it, it ended up you and I basically were negotiating. That at the end of the at day, at the end of the day, it was you and yes. I. Yes. Forget the realtors; they really didn't have any part of it. Then right. <laughs> taking their piece at That's the end. That's all it was. Yeah. That's all that was. That was good for them, but not so great. Yeah, for if, we, if we left it up to the realtors, it would never have closed. It would not have closed. Absolutely not. Yeah. So basically, um, I heard about this investor portfolio. We have a REIT district property trust, and um, we were looking to diversify because it's a diversified REIT, mm -hmm. and we were looking to diversify, meaning getting into some type of different asset class in real estate. And because of us being so familiar and having uh, Bruce County as our yeah. second home, basically, um, I, I felt that that would be the perfect area. And I drove by that site all the time, never thought for a second. And then after we spoke, after I heard about it, I drove up the next time and I saw, oh my goodness, there's that portfolio. Right. How amazing is that? And uh, the numbers were great. Um, and and District REIT ultimately wanted to purchase the property. So um, it ended up, uh, we, we ended up doing the deal, and you, and but, but the details in between are what's so interesting. Right, and it was all 12 properties or how yeah, many I think properties? Yeah, yeah. yeah, about 12 of them. Yeah. yeah, so it was a really great um, asset for District to purchase. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was great for your family as well. Absolutely. Because we were, we were having a bit of a stumbling block on, on what the value was going to be. Because what I needed, I had on paper calculated out what I needed for my family to retire. And, you know, interest rates weren't quite as good, quite what they are now. And so I was looking at investing somewhere, but very conservatively. And then, mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I told you what I needed to get back out of the investment. And, and you said to me, well, reinvest back in our REIT and you'll get that back. Mm -hmm. And we crunched some numbers and, and threw it around and, and that's a that, really that's cool scenario. It worked really it is. well. It, it is. Yeah, well we've got to go to break and I'd love to share with our viewers the juicy details of how that whole thing yeah. worked out and how we ended up striking a deal at the end. Yeah, uh, so really great information to come forward. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jordan and this is Carmen. Welcome back to 30 Minutes to Wealth. We're here with our guest, Jason. Thanks so much for being on the show today. Well, thanks for having me. This has been a lot of fun so far. It yeah, has. It has. And, you know, we were just before the break talking about, you know, this incredible thing that your family has done, um, being in the construction realm and then building these amazing industrial properties. And now to find out that, you know, you sold a, of the portfolio of them over to District REIT, which is really amazing. Yeah, but if you think about it, though, you know, you got into that real estate, you held on. Like, this is the power of real estate. Yes. Look what it enabled an entire family to mm -hmm. do, mm -hmm. right? To live on now for the rest of your lives. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, a, that's exactly how to describe it. Powerful investment. Yeah. But it takes a lot of time. Yes. And, and my father was very diligent about hanging on to it and, and trying to, you know, re-leverage and grow it and mm -hmm. get it to the point where we had a, enough of a portfolio to retire on at a very young age, as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, you're blessed. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. And but now, yeah, talk to us about the structure of that, because- yeah. It was um, fun. It, it was fun. It was yeah. fun. It was probably about eight months or nine months of negotiating. Yes, back and I forth. think so. Like we started, I think, in January, and I remember being in Florida. And so the concept came from, well, you wanted to hold a mortgage, you didn't want to be subject to all the tax. So when people are selling real estate and they they have a lot of the uh, less mortgage and a lot of profit, you pay capital gains tax. And when you pay tax, then mm. it eats away a lot of your profit. So it's almost like, ooh, why would I even bother selling, right? Right. So yeah. right. you know, with this case, we could you could do a, a seller mortgage, which would uh, I guess delay, postpone the tax that you have to pay, or 
Better yet, why don't you guys take that money that you would do as a mortgage and just invest that into District REIT. And this way here, you, your family, on that investment get to earn the 8% distribution that it was going with, plus any kind of upside that the REIT makes, because that's the nature of real estate. And now you're still, in a sense, having an ownership in these properties. You should tell along your dad with that. others, right? right? That's yeah. kind of nice. Yeah, and, and that that was uh, part of the motivation for doing it that way. Yeah. Because w when when you first proposed that, that was a, a big uh, red follow? flag for us. Oh, because okay. <laughs> it was, you know, the investment strategy is never put all your bags in one basket. Right. And that's essentially what we're doing. So it took a lot of a lot of research and a lot of communication between a lot of um, experts on my side yeah. and talk to your people and you know talk to you and right. figure what you guys were all about because I didn't didn't know District Trust I yeah I didn't didn't know you yeah so it was mm -hmm. it was a it was a I big gamble and there was a lot of you know yeah. sleepless nights and it's a significant investment that went in right? very significant so um, it was a significant investment but ultimately for our viewers to understand what REITs actually do. It's it's basically a company, a trust that invests in real estate and that trust gets the mortgages and others invest in it. And as they invest, the REIT grows. So ultimately the, the objective would be when you get to a certain level, you would sell it and then any of the investors involved would, would do very well, um, just like anything and, else and on nice, real estate. Yeah. yeah, the nice thing for investors is you're, you're you're basically co-owning with among a, a bunch of other investors yeah. a whole portfolio of real estate and as you said that's diversified different asset classes locations so it's a really nice way to still own real estate but in a passive yeah. way you don't have to run it right. even yeah. though you're still managing those properties yes yeah. well and that was part of the reason why we, we felt comfortable doing it uh, because it was it diversified your portfolio quite a bit yes we knew our buildings that we were selling to you were good quality buildings and good quality tenants with a real long-term potential of, of maintaining, you know, a good return on the investment. Absolutely. So that, that's really what sealed the deal for us. We're still going to be a part owner. Yes, you yeah. are. Not the be-all and end-all, but we're still yeah. we're still directly involved and we're staying on for property management. So we, we know and every day what's happening. And people don't know that you sold, do they know you sold it? All, all, the, the, all, the, all the tenants do because we had to Oh, officially yes. tell them, you know, yes. who the rent check's going to. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But, Minor yeah. detail. <laughs> but really, for them, in the grand scheme of things, nothing's changed other than the name on the check for paying the rent. I feel like rent. that's the best kind of case scenario Absolutely. you could have looked for, in, in, especially with something that was so close to your family. And, yeah. Um, you know, it would be hard to just sell that. Um, but this way, it's kind of like you've been able to do that, but still still staying involved, which is nice. Very hard to sell that because yeah. I'm sure my dad even shed some tears Aww. as it was happening. Oh, yeah, it, it was it was his baby. It really meant Aww, a lot to him. Oh, you're going to make everything. me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. It, it, but because we're still actively involved and, yeah. and we're still a part owner, he's, he's And he must be he's happy with the happy. returns. <laughs> the returns made all the difference in the world. Yeah. That it, helps the it, whole it thing, helps. right? Yeah. Yes. And he doesn't yeah. have to work for those returns. I mean, he can, it's it's passive now, right? right. So he, I'm sure he has a lot more. Well, it, it was passive for him before because I did all the work. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but now there's a lot more cash flow, right? Yes. A lot, lot more cash flow. We've got our nest egg. Um, we're able to get some, some cash out of the company above and beyond what we've reinvested. Yeah. And uh, we're in a better tax position because the, yes. the capital gains on selling is a lot better mm -hmm. than the income tax on gaining, getting the passive income. And when you take that, so when you when you sell your property and you take that and invest it into the REIT, um, there's a tax advantage. Huge for that. tax advantage. I knew what REITs were. But I wasn't actively involved in any investment outside the the, the holding company and the construction company and properties. Yeah. So it, it's been a real education for me in the past year, and it's it's win win for everybody. Yeah, it really is. It, it is for the even for the tenants because you guys are gonna gonna take the whole the whole development to the next level. You're gonna grow it, and you're already making positive changes. Yeah. So we'd like to actually there was an opportunity to actually build out another, how many, 60,000, 50, 60,000 square feet of... of uh, in total, there's probably about 60,000 square feet on three different properties, yeah. both potential. So we want to proceed with that. Yeah, and, and the market's ready for it. It is ready for it, because I was saying there's no vacancies. There's I'm looking for storage 
in mm -hmm. that area up there. I have, we have businesses as well, and we're building and we have construction. I have nowhere to put our stuff. Right. I'm looking everywhere for storage. Can't find we, it. We can hook you up. Where? Something. <laughs> can you? Is there anything left? No. Well, Every we built time something. I call, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, because I'm caught. Anything there? Yeah. Nope. That's a good example of how much in demand that is Needed. up there. And it, it's been like that for a long time. Anytime we did have a vacancy, even when the economy was slow, it wasn't for very long. Um, mm -hmm. And when things are busy, there's always a waiting list for people looking for something up there in the commercial industrial side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so Jason, now that that's done, um, what are your plans? Like, I mean, are you, do you think you'll want to do any more investing? Or are you just looking forward to, as you said, like having some Vacation. time to... Me, me personally, no, I'm, I'm, my plan is to, you know, work half days and spend more time uh, at home and, you know, do some vacationing and you enjoy should. life a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And you have a big passion for cars. Yes. Yeah, we, so I race a little bit. Uh, we do the Champ Car Endurance Series. We just, we were in down Daytona uh, the 1st of April, ran down there. We, we try to do two or three races a year, so we'll do that. And I, I love racing. That's what this, that's why I did this. Right. Was so I could, so I could that's play. your, that was your ultimate goal. That was goal. my ultimate goal. That's my passion is cars. Yeah. Now, is there any other real estate you guys own? No. You sold it all? We sold everything. Just our residential that we live in right now is all we own. Wow. So talk to us, and, and I, I know this is something we kind of touched on, but the importance of, of exiting real estate or knowing when and why that makes sense for an investor. Because, I mean, this, this synergy here was amazing. It was like it was really meant to be. Meant and I know you be. said this was like a family plan, but, like, what was really going through your head in, in determining when and, and how you wanted to so exit? The, the exit plan was, was just numbers, and that, that was easy. Numbers are easy to work with. Um, how you get there and, and what you use to, facil to facilitate that, that's a bit more complicated. And mm -hmm. when, when Carmen and I were discussing reinvesting back in the REIT, it worked and it was, and it was very organic to get where we needed to go. Mm -hmm. um, so and w our plan was to exit, like I said, because I wanted to retire, my brother wanted to retire, yeah. my father didn't need to work anymore, um, and my brother's children didn't want to you know, be the landlords and look after the property. So yeah. there, there was no legacy beyond beyond us. So well, I think it's important, important because investors, I mean, even if they're in one maybe asset class or one strategy and, and you know, they need to determine maybe when it's time to exit that and move on to something else, maybe a different strategy. Like how do you know when, when it's that time, right? So for you, it was just, I mean, it was, you said it was the numbers. For us, it, it was, was just, just numbers. Yeah. Not for your dad. Not he was him. very emotionally. It very, yeah, he did not. He didn't want to let go of anything, oh, but yeah. he he did want to see us not have to work and have you know a decent More flexibility, a passive, passive income. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he appreciates that. And you guys did really well last year with your returns. Absolutely. So it was, what impeccable timing? It would the timing was perfect. Couldn't ask for any better. The market right. market was hot. Uh, yeah. District trust was growing exponentially. That's right. And we got in. I, I believe at a really really good time. Oh, perfect! You guys made eighteen percent on your money yes. that year. Was your dad like flipping Blown out away. over that? <laughs> he smiled. I would. I smiled. Big Would you be flipping out for him? Oh my uh, god! So yes. Jason, before we wrap up, is there any piece of advice or anything you could offer to other investors? I think what's really important in the real estate uh, industry is to get in as early as possible because it is a long-term investment. It is. Yeah. It, it's so important to get in early. Um, make the sacrifices you need to make to make it successful and then enjoy life when you should as early as you possibly yeah. can yeah. in my case I'm not 50 yet yeah yeah wow amazing well thanks freedom so much. 40 something yeah yeah freedom 45 didn't work out so well but, uh, 40 something <laughs> 40 something <laughs> gotta love it awesome well thanks so much for coming on it was a Thank pleasure you. having you it Thank was you. really Great. If you're interested in learning more about real estate investing, you can go to 30minutes12th.com to see the rest of our episodes. That's it. Our time is up. Go create wealth.